Wild Bill went back to his hotel room to ponder his options. He was scared that this accident would end his run as a director. They told me, said, you know who you kicked off the thing? I said, I don't know who the hell it was, and I don't... It was Otto Kahn. I said, I can't tell you what I said, because I beep Otto Kahn. And that night, when I was taking a shower all alone, I, I came in and I... All alone, it was the... the you know, I, I was only 29 years old, and the whole the burden of the whole thing was gone. I'd licked these bastards. I knew I had a beautiful thing, and I knew I was the only guy that could put it together because no one knew anything about it. They couldn't fire me. And all of a sudden, I not, and I got l lonesome loaded. Have you ever done that? All by yourself. And then I said, oh, Jesus, this isn't doing me any good. So I went in to take hot and cold showers to try and sober myself up, and there was a knock on the door, and I yelled, come in. And I went out with a towel around me, half loaded, and it was the three moneyed men. I said, oh, Jesus. But at least if they fire me, they're going to have a five minutes that they'll never forget as long as they live. Otto Kahn, whom I became great friends with later, Otto Kahn said, I said, I'm sorry, you want a drink? I'm, I, I'm a little loaded, but I, I can't help it. He said, I don't blame you, but all we want to say is we've got to go home. We're on our way back to New York, and you can have whatever you want for as long as you want. You're a very, very wonderful man. And with that, they went out. And I fell down on the floor and cried like a baby. After the wise men left for New York, spirits picked up around the set. Principal photography wrapped, and a dinner with cast and crew followed. They were to all head back to Hollywood to finish interior filming. You brought a German down, they gave you ten days. And you get to Paris for ten days, you go to the Folie Berger. Paris, it was just full of military and uh, women of uh, ill repute. <laughs> And it was a great place for fun, but it was sad because it was quick fun. You know, you never knew one, but it, and you get sort of into that phase, not knowing whether you're going to be there tomorrow or the next day. One major scene Wellman was having trouble with was an interior shot featuring Arlen and Rogers on leave in Paris. Wellman wanted to be able to pan through a crowd of people from one end of the room to the other, only to stop in Arlen and Rogers in one continuous motion. An overhead track was constructed and the camera was attached. The camera dollied from one end of the room to the other, capturing everything Wellman wanted. E. Burton Steen was at the helm and captured the terrific shot. This is one of the terrific movie innovations Wellman and his crew got little to no credit for. Wellman wanted another dolly shot later in the film, with Clara Bow and Bonnie Rogers walking down a street. The scene was rehearsed and practiced. Finally, Wellman rolled film. But a little way into the scene, Steen fell over with the camera rolling. He had a heart attack. The film came out alright. The scene started out terrific, but ended with the best blue sky shots you'd ever see. E. Burton Steen never recovered from the heart attack. There's a scene in Wings where Buddy Rogers comes upon Arlen's body in the French farmhouse. There's this very tearful, very emotional scene between them, during which Buddy actually kisses Richard Arlen on the lips. It's a scene of such pure emotion, of such unselfconscious sadness and, and affection that you really don't see anything else like that in films then or now. I mean, it's a very rare moment of just pure love between men. Wellman finally wrapped all shooting. He was still unliked around the studio, but was kept around to finish editing and post-production. Buzz around the studio was that the film was doomed to fail. Despite terrific preview reactions, Studio Brass felt it wouldn't stay three weeks on Broadway. Nevertheless, Wellman felt confident in his picture. A successful preview in New York followed, and Studio Head began to rethink their position on the film. Wings premiered on August 12, 1927 at the Criterion Theater in New York City. Studio Brass, still angry at Wellman, refused to allow him to attend the premiere. It was his film, and he was snubbed. At the princely sum of $2 per ticket, Wings ran for 63 weeks at the Criterion before moving to the Rialto, where it lasted another two solid years. 
Wings was released in January 1929, this time with a synchronized musical score. A turntable was hidden behind the screen. Studio brass were weeping the rewards of Wellman's hard work, while Wellman got no credit at all. But if there was one more downside to all of this, when the first Academy Awards were announced, William Wellman was left off the ballot. The Oscars, as they would become known, were the brainchild of MGM guru Louis B. Mayer. He thought that maybe Hollywood could control itself before the government intervened and started censoring films. The Academy Awards banquet took place on May 16, 1929. Everyone who was anyone in Hollywood was there. Douglas Fairbanks was the host, and on the arm of his lovely wife, Mary Pickford. The only one absent was William Wellman, the director of the film announced several weeks prior as Best Picture of the Year. The man who created the film and shaped it into the classic it is wasn't even invited. The Oscars have become big business. In the beginning, the first Oscar ceremony lasted all of five minutes. It was hosted in the Blossom Room of the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and Douglas Fairbanks was the MC of the first Oscars. He handed out the first award trophies, and uh, of course, uh, he remained as president of the Academy for the next four years. Wings would pick up two Oscars that night, one for Best Picture and one for Best Engineering Effects, given to Roy Pomeroy. Wings made history that night for another reason. It is in an exclusive category of films. It is one of only three films to be snubbed for Best Direction and still win Best Picture. The other two films being Grand Hotel, 1931-32, and Driving McDaisy in 1989. Wings was a blockbuster for Paramount, but the director who made it all happen was ostracized from the studio. Although eventually hired back, he was still misunderstood. I wanted to make every type of picture that was ever made, and I have. When I quit, I wanted to be sure that I'd done it. Now, he had to be a studio director to do that. Wellman went on to make over 75 films and help where he could in many others. His works garnered some 32 Academy Award nominations, including four for Best Picture and three for Best Director. His only Oscar would come for writing A Star is Born in 1937. His other great achievements include The Public Enemy, 1931 with James Cagney, The Story of G.I. Joe in 1945, Battleground, a Best Picture nominee in 1949, Island in the Sky in 1953 with John Wayne, and The High and the Mighty, 1954, also with John Wayne. William A. Wellman may have passed away at the age of 79 on December 9, 1975, but his greatest work, Wings, will live on as Oscar's first Best Picture. <laughs>